Hello everyone, in this lesson we're going to determine the equation of a graph. Now remember in the previous video we said that a graph can be moved in four different ways. So it can be moved, you can shift it horizontally, and so when you shift something you move it in one direction. You could compress or stretch the graph horizontally. So for example if you, that's when you stretch it in two directions like that, or you could compress a graph. And so that's when you take it from what it was and you make it shorter. Then we can do the same things in the vertical direction. So we can shift something vertically, so that does something like that, or it could go down. And then you could also compress or stretch vertically. And so that has two arrows to show that it goes in both directions. Now, if I had to give you the general formula of a sin causal tan graph, it would be this, where A corresponds to the vertical or, yeah, vertical shift or, not shift, vertical stretch or compress. K is your horizontal stretch or compress. P is your horizontal shift. And then Q is your vertical shift. They will never give you more than two of those at a time. So then, how do we know what this graph, what's happened to this graph? Well, they usually, they will, they always tell you, they'll, they'll give you the general formula. And so here we have the general formula, where we can see this letter is the unknown. Now that letter corresponds to this one down here. And so we know that this is a graph that has been stretched or compressed in a horizontal direction. Nothing else has happened to it. So all we need to do is find a point on the graph that we can compare to the original cos. So for example, I'm going to look at this point over here where the coordinates are 180 and 1. Now I know that on a normal cos graph, if I had to quickly draw that over here, it has the same shape, but this, quad, this coordinate is usually 90 degrees, this is 180, this is usually 270, and then over here we are at 360. So if I look at that part that I've highlighted up at the top here, that's normally 360, but now it's 180. So they have divided this graph by two, so they've halved it. But remember, x's are complicated, so halving it is actually gonna cause k to have a value of two. And so the equation of that graph is gonna be cos two x. So they've halved it, so they've made it shorter, but x's are complicated, and so we're not going to put a half there, we're going to put a 2. And so that is the equation of that graph. So that's number 1. Number 2 says determine the amplitude. Okay, we can do that. We know that amplitude is the maximum distance from the resting position, so that is still going to be 1. The range, well, that's your y value. So y is an element from the lowest y value to the highest y value, so that's minus 1 up to positive 1. The domain, that's just what they've given us. So we'll say x is an element going from negative 180 up to 360. So minus 180 up to 360 using square brackets due to the fact that the graph does exist at those points. They're not asymptotes. And then the period. Now we know that a normal cos graph has a period of 360. We just saw in this video that this graph has been halved. So it would take 180 degrees to complete one cycle.